Good morning. You are listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. It is currently 7 o'clock a.m. on the dot here on the Morning Buzz. It is Tuesday, November 29th, and I'm your host, Nicole Passero. And join with me today, we have my co-host, Monique Jabba. Hey, I'm Monique Jabba, and today we will be discussing the civil fraud trial case, a new COVID variant, Google deleting inactive accounts, and more. Exactly. We are going to jump right into our top news story of the morning, which is the New York civil fraud trial is coming up. Former President Donald Trump is set to testify in the New York civil fraud trial on December 11th. The former president previously took the witness stand on November 6th and testified under oath in a case that stemmed from a $250 million civil lawsuit filed by New York Attorney General Letitia James. James made many accusations against Trump alleging defendants inflated the value of company assets and Trump's own wealth for better loan and insurance terms. The attorneys also intend to call Eric Trump to the stand on December 6th and are expected to wrap up their arguments soon after the former president testifies. Looking back on Trump's earlier appearances taking the stand in court, he stayed from a He strayed from answering the questions directly, prompting rebukes from New York Judge Arthur Engerin. It is unusual for the frontrunner of the Republican nomination to testify in a trial less than a month out from the 2024 presidential election, which will be happening next year, in about a year from what's happening right now. The former president is also expected to face four criminal trials next year as well. So for Mr. Trump over here, he's got a lot in store for him coming up in the new year in 2024 with four criminal trials, plus this trial, which is coming up later on in December. It's currently November 28th, so we've got a few more days left of November, and He's, he's going to be on that trial stand once again, and also his family is very involved within the case. Oh, true, because I'm seeing Trump, like, all over the news recently, and it seems like he just doesn't want to answer any questions when he goes to court, and him being, you know, facing so many allegations, and I'm just like, how is he going through, like, being a... Um, campaigning for to become president you know that's what i'm saying because you're right you know he's he's always reaching headlines it's like never there's never a dull moment with him and now that he's going you know at the end of the day like yes he was our former president but he he's at heart he's a businessman and now like the entire the entire trial now is ba- is basically based on fraud, conspiracy, insurance fraud, falsifying business records. So, and you're right. He's there, he's always trying to find some way to not give it away. And like he's like, oh, like you know, he he sticks to his claims, and like that's it. He just doesn't want to confess what he does or you know admit any to anything. So there's always that you know, chance of mystery and suspicions when it comes to trials like this. And for those who don't know, Eric Trump is Donald Trump's son, who is also a businessman, and he's also denying the allegations as well. And he is also set to testify on the stand on December 6th, which is before um, his father. So... Look, look at this family dynamic here. Like, what is happening? They're all businessmen. And like they you are. Said, they definitely have some tactics that they're playing right now. And so I guess I'm not expecting much from Eric Trump to say anything. So, you know, we'll see. Exactly. Like, we'll see depending on what actually does happen. But Trump's lawyers are predicting that they will to finish their defense case by December 15th. So that is the last day of our semester here at Montclair. So we're going to have to wait to till Friday, that last day, to see what actually happens within the case and how this is going to affect Trump's campaign when it comes to the presidential election. Because moving on from 
Trump testifying in court, a new COVID variant has been detected. Yes, folks, you heard that correctly. There is a new COVID variant. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, a new COVID variant called VA.286 has been detected. The agency emphasizes how the case has nearly tripled and estimated that highly mutated variants prevalence was two weeks ago. The new variant is the most common in the Northeast with 13.1% cases in New York and New Jersey area. Before this new variant, officials have said the majority of new COVID-19 cases have been blamed on the XBB variant and a crowd of XBB's closely related descendants. The agency says as little as 4.8% or as much as 15.2% of circulating SARS-CoV-2 would be from VA.286. The agency explains, quote, it is important to note that early projections tend to be less reliable since they depend on examining growth tends of a smaller number of sequences, especially as laboratory-based testing volume for SARS-CoV-2 has decreased substantially over time. You know, there's like a bunch of new variants coming out like every year. Yeah. You know, and they're like constantly spreading and you know, they're going to have to keep making new vaccines for them. Exactly. You're right. And I feel like obviously even throughout the entire year, there's always a new variant coming out, like from one variant to another, it just spreads. And it's just, it's all of these germs collaborating together to make completely new variants. And especially as we enter the winter and the holiday season, the more people are going to spread germs because of like families gathering and, you know, things like that semesters ending. So, you know, we're still in college now and it's like, There's always going to be new variants, especially during the winter, you know, when it comes to flu season and it's just so common for these things to come out. So it's definitely uh, let's let's advise everybody to stay safe, wash your hands because things are always spreading. I had COVID like two weeks ago, right before we went on break. And I probably had this variant because I mean, like it's there's just it's always changing. And it's crazy because sometimes like, you don't even know you have COVID when you actually do. Yeah. MSU is celebrating the 2023 Women's Leadership Alliance Conference. Over 400 women from around New Jersey met on the Montclair State University campus for the ninth annual Women's Leadership Alliance Conference. The event featured keynote speakers and involved breakout sessions, including tanks and panel discussions. Highly engaged leaders from the university organized the event and networking conference to motivate female and female identifying high schoolers statewide to apply and attend college, develop mentor mentee relationships, and gain the confidence to plan their futures. This is all according to Daniel Jean, Montclair's assistant provost for special programs, EOF, and academic success. The high schoolers had the opportunity to interact with the panel of other female female college students who spoke about their experience with attending Montclair. They discussed topics like the college application process and the life-changing benefits of admission as an EOF scholar. Jasmine Mosley, the co-organizer of the event and an EOF counselor slash advisor, said, quote, we build and adjust the conference each year based on the post-event surveys we receive. We had some attendees tell us they didn't want to leave. The feedback also tells us we are touching lives in an impactful way, stimulating female scholars to continue to grow their leadership abilities and plan their life goals. I think this is such an amazing opportunity for those females who are high school students because you know the high school application process not the high school application process the college application process can be super stressful super confusing as a high school student some some people have problems with figuring out their major like oh i don't know what to do some people have a problem in general figuring out do i even want to go to college because you know it's not something that like you have to do it's something that you can choose to do and having these conferences i think for high school students are something that is can be so beneficial to them being able to see what college is like 
and getting a step-by-step -step process on that application because it's not always easy to figure out, especially when you don't have somebody advising you or like an older sibling on figuring out how to do it. So that is all we have for you today here on the Morning Buzz, and you can tune in to us the rest of the week, same time, same place, 7 to 9 a.m. to hear more of your news and fun entertainment. But with that, we hope you have a great rest of your morning.